Welcome to part two of learning how to build an event launch page like velocity.builder.io. In part one, we built the background, set up the framework animation, and created the countdown timer. In this video, we will dive into adding a draggable cursor animation that activates on page load. If you have visited velocity.builder.io, you've likely noticed a designer cursor sliding into the viewport and tweaking the design and then exiting. We will recreate this experience using React and Tailwind CSS. We will pick up right where we left off with our Next.js app in the previous video. While this code is available on my GitHub page, I strongly recommend watching the previous video to understand how we've implemented the other elements. First, let's add a new asset URL for a cursor element that we will animate. In source, utils, asset utils, I will insert a new key value pair. This is for cursor. You can find this on my GitHub repo and the link is in the description. Next, we will create a new component. In the components folder, create a new file called cursor.tsx. Inside this file, we will define a new React component. We will also import the necessary modules and hooks to control the cursor's position and interact with the DOM. We need the assets array to access the cursor image, the image component to render the cursor, use state and use effect for the animation sequence. Inside the component, Initialize a state variable to manage the cursor's position. So you state, let's call it cursor position, set cursor position, and the initial value is an object where we set the cursor coordinates to minus 100 and minus 100. This effectively hides it off screen to the left. In the JSX, we will render a single image component to display the cursor asset. Now, Tailwind's compilation process doesn't allow for dynamic class values that change over time, so we will use the style attribute to set the cursor's coordinates. We set top to cursor position dot y pixels and left cursor position dot x pixels. We will also use tailwind to specify the position type as absolute and control the transition properties. So transition all, duration of 700 milliseconds is in out, and the cursor will be stacked on top of other layers with a Z index of 50. We will provide an alt attribute, cursor, a source, which is the asset URL, so assets.cursor, and a fixed height and width, 80 and 50. If we now, Include this in page.tsx right before the closing main tag and import it at the top, head back to the browser and reload the page. It is clear we don't see the cursor and it is off screen. Let's bring it into the screen, placing it above the claim ticket button. We will use the use effect hook to set up an animation sequence. Pass in the callback and empty dependency array. First, we will define an async function named animate cursor and invoke it. This function will execute a four step animation sequence. Step one, add a one second delay, giving the user a moment to scan the UI. So, await new promise and we resolve after a one second set timeout. Step two, move the cursor to the center of the claim button. For that, 
in page.tsx, we will create a reference to the button element. So at the top, from React, import use ref. Within the component, invoke it. So const button ref is equal to use ref of type HTML button element and the initial value is null. Attach this to the button element. So button ref is equal to button ref. Pass this button ref as a prop to the cursor component. So button ref is equal to button ref. In cursor.tsx, at the top, import ref object and specify the button ref prop. So button ref of type ref object of HTML button element. And then with that reference, we calculate the button's position using the get bounding client rectangle method. So const button rectangle is equal to button ref dot current dot get bounding client rectangle. Now let's make sure the button ref is set. We should now be able to remove the question mark. Once we have the button rectangle, we will update the cursor's coordinates. So const x is equal to button rectangle dot x plus button rectangle dot width divided by 2. On similar lines, the y position is equal to button rectangle dot y dot height divided by 2. If this is confusing, please read more about the get bounding client rectangle method on MDN. With x and y now calculated, we update the cursor's coordinates with set cursor position passing in x comma y. We will also add one more second delay. If we now save the file and reload the page, we can see the cursor animating into position exactly at the center of claim ticket button. Step three, shift the cursor and the button 150 pixels downward. We will calculate the new y coordinate. So const new y is equal to the existing y plus 150, pretty simple, and update the state. Set cursor position, x as it is, and y, to new y. We will also adjust the button's transition and transform properties, creating the illusion that the cursor is dragging the button. So button ref dot current dot style dot transition is equal to transform 700 milliseconds ease in out and button ref dot current dot transform is equal to translate y 150 pixels. We will then wait for another second. If we save the file and go back to the browser, reload the page, we can now see both the cursor and the button moving down from their original position. Finally, in step four, we will move the cursor out of the viewport to the right. So set cursor position, x set to window dot inner width minus 100, and y set to minus 100. Save the file, and when you reload the page, you will see the entire animation sequence working seamlessly. While this demo features just one cursor, you can easily extend this to multiple cursors for a landing page, each representing a different role like a designer, product owner, or developer. That is suitable for landing pages that aim to highlight collaboration. The code is up for grabs on my GitHub repo, so don't hesitate to check it out. And remember, claim your ticket to our AI launch event on October 12th. I hope to see you there.